Welcome to our Good Friday service. This is part of a three-day service that began yesterday on Maundy Thursday, continues today, and then will finish tomorrow with the Vigil of Easter. That will be live streamed at four o'clock in the afternoon. Our service continues. We have tasted the goodness of the Word of God. And yet yeah. we, are we often, often fall, fall away, away from, from it. it. Crucifying Jesus anew. Again and again we tell the story. And again, again and again, again we find ourselves here in the story. In the story. For as often as necessary, let us relive it so that with God's help, we will no longer repeat it. We believe in the long night of the soul, the spaces and times when despair weighs on us like a blanket. We believe those seasons of life are real and that each and every one of us experiences them. We refuse to believe that pain and suffering hold the last word, for we believe in Jesus of Nazareth, who was betrayed and bloodied so many years ago and whose narrative didn't stop here. So while we are here, again, at the foot of the cross, knee deep in despair and face to face with pain, we profess, we, we believe, believe in the sunrise, sunrise. We, we believe in the power of gathering together. together. We, we believe, believe that phone calls and hugs can make a difference. difference. We, we believe that life is not fair, fair but overflowing with love. love. We, we believe that we cannot go this path alone. We believe that even here, even on this day, God is drawing near. Amen. Holy God, as we journey through this familiar story, help us to understand it anew. Show us, O oh God, where and why we find ourselves here again and again, and move us forward to a more just future. begin our stations at the cross. After his first scripture reading, you are invited to consider a person in your life other than yourself who is having an exceptionally difficult time at this moment. On your piece of paper, write a prayer for that person. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, 
Could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. reading from the Gospel of Mark. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him, and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. Again and again, we betray one another and God. We confess our part in the fragmentation of the human family and we lament our brokenness. prayer that you just wrote during station one and tear it up but do not discard the shreds. to guide the 
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them saying, I don't know what you're talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that very moment, the cock crowed and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and he wept bitterly. The word of the Lord. The good that we do, we do not do. Even when we are not willfully malicious, we fail the human family through our fear and timidity. We neglect to stand up for what's right or come to another's aid when they cry out. Sometimes we just don't want to be bothered with the world's ills. We lament that others suffer when we seek self-preservation. You're invited to further tear up your prayer into even smaller pieces. reading from the Gospel of Mark. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further reply, so that Pilate was amazed. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. This station lifts up the work of the Innocence Project a nonprofit working to exonerate the wrongly convicted through DNA testing and reform the criminal justice system to prevent future injustice. Kennedy Brewer was sentenced to death by the state of Mississippi for a murder he did not commit. Though DNA evidence overturned his conviction, prosecutors intended to retry him and he remained incarcerated for five more years before his release. Habid Wahir Abdal served 16 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. He was exonerated after DNA evidence ruled him out as a suspect. Six years later, he passed away. In 1983, George Allen Jr. was wrongly convicted of capital murder, rape, sodomy, and first degree burglary. He served 30 years of a 95-year sentence before being exonerated. He died three years later. Again and again, our lips and laws 
bear false, false witness, witness against our neighbors. Holy, Holy One, one save, save us from, from this appetite, appetite for injustice, and turn our hearts, hearts towards you. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and striking him on the face. I invite you to try to reassemble the prayer that you tore in the first two stations. are evoked when you see such fragmenting and violence done to something you created with such love and care a reading from the gospel of john then he handed him over to them to be crucified so they took jesus and carrying the cross by himself he went out to what is called the place of the skull which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Judeans read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the temple said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. And then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. This station draws on the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, which chillingly keeps records of the last words of executed offenders. It should be noted that many who offered last statements maintain their innocence or suggest they were sentenced unjustly. The last words of Justin Hall, executed by the state of Texas on November 6, 2019. Yeah, I want to address the Roundtree family and apologize for the pain and suffering that I caused. And to the Diaz family, that I have put you through this. This should have never happened. And to my mom, Marilia, I love you and I'm going to miss you all. I'm ready. The last words of Arturo Diaz, executed by the state of Texas on September 26, 2013. I hope that this serves as an example for the youngsters. Think about it before you make a bad decision. Let's go, Warden, I'm ready. The last words of George Whitaker III, executed by the state of Texas on November 12th, 2008. First off, I'd like to say to Mr. and Mrs. Carrier, I apologize for your pain and suffering. I pray, Lord, please forgive me. How do you want Jesus to remember you? A reading from the Gospel of John. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. 
Here we turn to a video reflection by the Reverend A reading from the Gospel of John. And her visual and art project. Pieta, woman, behold your son, behold your mother. A read. Twenty twenty can be counted by many of us, I think, as one of the worst years of our lives, if not the worst. For me, it just felt like a constant, unending Good Friday experience where you are a witness to horror after horror after horror without any apparent end or relief. We had moved to Louisville, Kentucky the year prior so it hadn't yet been a year for us when the COVID-19 pandemic emerged. And for as much as the pandemic stopped in our lives, it, it, it couldn't stop everything. For instance, it couldn't stop this practice of extrajudicial killings of Black people in Louisville, Kentucky found itself as one of the epicenters of racial unrest in America. And as things were ramping up in the case against the police officers who were involved in the issuing of the no, not no warrant the night Brianna was killed, we were also nearing the anniversary of Emmett Till's murder. And I was just wondering what about that is pertinent. There's, there feels like there's something here. And as a creative, the way I lean into grief is to create through it. And I wanted to create through this. You think back on the events of 1955 and what Mrs. Mamie Till Mobley did and how that catalyzed a movement. It, it's just unthinkable that we are still wrestling with these very issues that took her son from her. And I just needed to paint through that. And with 2020 feeling like a good Friday experience, I think of Jesus's words in John's gospel of, uh, uh, talking about that day where he says to his mother, woman, behold your son. And, you know, there's no indication who she's talk, who he's talking about, if he's talking about himself or the beloved disciple. But what would it mean for Mary to look at her son as he's being lynched? Because he was being lynched. What, what kind of fortitude would that take? Where would you have to go? And so I, I dove into Mrs. Till Mobley's narrative to see what it took for her. What does it take to witness that horror? And how long will it take for us to pay attention to what it does to her and to other mothers? Consider who you must receive as your own family. Who suffers in silence? Whose pain is ignored or marginalized? Who is my mother? Those, Those who suffer, suffer the, the greatest, greatest losses, losses yet, yet commit, commit to, to doing, doing the greatest, greatest good. good. Who are my siblings? Those, Those who, who bind our wounds, wounds in our time of need. need. To whom must we turn our attention? To the vulnerable, to the vulnerable and marginalized, to those who are in the crosshairs of racism, xenophobia, food insecurity, exploitation, and discrimination, to the neighbors we have yet to fully behold. Again and again, Jesus calls us to see one another and be a family. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. 
It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. can't breathe. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away.
look away. Do not look away. Do not rush to redeem this violence. Do not carry on as if nothing is wrong. Grieve this. Mourn this. Sit with this. And if you cannot sit and mourn with those who mourn, grieve with those who grieve. When we go in peace, Understand that peace is not the absence of tension, but the presence of justice. May God's Spirit direct you to create the kind of justice that was denied to Jesus on this day. Amen. Holy God, we pray on this day, Good Friday, have mercy on us. We find ourselves here at the foot of the cross, filled with grief and lament, and our broken and eager hearts cry out to you. Let us pray for the Holy Church throughout the world. Let us pray for bishops, rostered ministers, and all servants of the church, and for all the people of God. Let us pray for those preparing for baptism. Let us pray for our siblings who share our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray for the Jewish people, the first to hear the word of God. Let us pray for those who do not share our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us pray for those who do not believe in God. Let us pray for God's creation. Let us pray for those who serve in public office. Let us pray for those in need. Almighty God, look with loving mercy on your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed, to be given over to the hands of sinners, and to suffer death on the cross, who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Oh, my 
I gave you my peace, but you draw the sword in my name, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. land, but you opened my side with a spear. I washed your feet as a sign of my love, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. But you lifted me high on a cross. I raised you from death and prepared you for the tree of life. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Christ, and we bless you. By, By your holy, holy cross, cross, you have, you have redeemed, redeemed the world. world. 